Ryan made an impact everywhere he went. He was a really fun kid. He made me a better person being his mom. He was born in Foster, Rhode Island. He went to public school until he went to high school. He went to Bishop Hendrick in high school. Uh, I met Ryan in the uh, summer going into seventh grade and uh, we played hockey together for the junior high and then throughout high school into college. He liked to um, feel like he could make a change, I guess. He always liked the thought of um, protecting and serving. Helping people, he was just all about it. Ryan was, uh, he, had a, he had a heart of gold. Uh, he just wanted to get out in the community and get to know people. You know, more often than doing police work, he'd be playing basketball with kids. So that's, that's the kind of uh, police officer he was and that's the kind of person he was. You know, as I travel Route 4 North and get on 95, uh, you know, not thinking of Ryan, not thinking of where he is or what he's doing, I come, I come upon an accident. Horrific, horrific accident. Mark and Ryan live in the, the same neighborhood virtually and both worked the shift together. They worked together that night and it was uh, Ryan's final day of his probationary period. Probably in his career, uh, probably one of the most important days of his career. I literally stopped my truck in the high speed lane, put on my flashers uh, and I walked up to the vehicles and I think Probably about 20 feet away from the vehicle, I realized it was Ryan's car. Lee and Gary had been traveling. They were down south, and uh, I think they were driving at the time when I spoke to them and uh, talked to Lee and told her about Ryan. We were told he was brought to Rhode Island Hospital. Basically, they just told us that Ryan was hit head on, on on the highway by a wrong way driver. They put the doctor on the phone and, and she told us. Um, Being away like that, um, traveling home, we were kind of isolated from um, the truth. It's, you know, once we pulled in the driveway, it, it hit home that, um, that it was real, that we lost Ryan. Lee called my mom back, and um, I was on the other side of the room, and I could, I could hear her through the phone. Just, just could hear her through the phone saying, um, he's gone. You know, I, I had to call my, my mom and dad six o'clock in the morning to tell them that Ryan was killed, not on the job, not doing anything dangerous, but going home from work. It was, you know, it was his first day as an official police officer. He was happy, doing nothing wrong, just going home from work, almost home. One exit away, he was so close to being safe. I would be here every single day in the summer, whether it was to work out, just hang out by the water, go on the boat, or just whatever. So, I don't know, I just, I find myself with um, less to do now, because those are things that, I don't know, I would always look forward to doing. Um, I, I'm disappointed for him, the, the person that ended up killing my son. I, I feel 
sorry that he didn't have somebody there with him that night that cared enough about him to stop him from driving. We treated Ryan as a member of our family. And the only thing we could do that night was to be with him. Just as we would for our own son. Life is precious and I don't want to waste it. And I want to make sure that whatever I do with my life, basically make him proud too. He was just a good kid. He was doing all the right things. He had his life literally in line and had his dream job. 12 years earlier, that was me. So the ripple effect of his life being gone is just disturbing. I would do anything to have him back. That can't happen. So we just hope and pray that something will change people's hearts. And if sharing our pain is the only way to make that happen, then I would do it gladly.